welcome back to another episode of Illyrian Cuisine. I want to take a second to thank everyone who has uh, given us a lot of positive feedback. There's been a lot of supportive comments both on the YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, even on the Chronicles of Illyria website where this is posted on the forums. Thank all of you for all of the outpouring of support. And I'm glad to say that there are a lot of people giving some great ideas on future episodes and what to make. Um, so this is going to be a long rolling thing. We definitely recommend you guys subscribe if you like what you see. Now, to begin, I know things look a little different here. Um, our previous episode, I said we'd be making Svelrosi cod baked over a bed of wild rice. Um, I had every intention of doing that, but then I was contacted by Magbad. He's actually the magistrate of the great city of Svelros. And he contacted me to inform me that the uh, winter season in that part of Illyria is actually dragging on quite a bit. And if I could make something that's a little more um, indicative of the weather. It's a good highlight as well, because in Chronicles of Lyra, in the game, there's no set um, time frame for seasons. It's not going to be four days winter, four days fall, four days spring, four days summer. It's going to be realistic. It's going to be interactive within the game. So you might have a time where winter is extremely short. And then you might have three seasons in a row where winter is extremely long. So you have to plan out for that. You have to plan, am I going to be able to uh, harvest my crops if winter is too long or it starts too soon? Am I going to be able to uh, get all the food stocks that I need to survive this long winter? Uh, these are the questions you need to ask before you start playing the game. Okay, so to begin, what we're going to be needing for this to start is about four long cod fillets. Usually, uh, this is about two and a half pounds. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and cut these into bite-sized pieces. Okay, once again, very important to use a sharp knife for this. Now, this cod is freshly caught this morning in the docks of Svelros. In case you're not aware, Svelros is a coastal city um, located within the dark home sorry the dusk ford duchy uh, now the people of Svelros are known for their skills at trade and at economics that's really what they do they wake up they go to sleep they're thinking about trade it's the commerce hub of the kingdom really so given that you know, the people of Svelros really don't have time to sit and make Canis Rabbit Delight. They don't have time to wait for a Glory of Luna cheesecake to finish baking. Um, they, they, they would consider that a waste of time. So they need something fast. They need something easy. They need something quick. Now, that's not to say that you can go, uh, you can get, get away with just giving them a, some mutton or some porridge. Once again, this is a trade hub of an entire kingdom. They are bombarded daily by exotic cuisine and rare to find herbs and spices. So their palates require that. I mean, they're, they want that stuff. They just don't want to wait for it. So this is a perfect dish. Now, given that this is fresh, make sure you debone it first. Now, if you're not able to get fresh cod and you have to go with frozen, say you're in Mycia or in Whisperwind, in a landlocked duchy, then you're going to want to make sure it's thawed out overnight so you can get all as much moisture, uh, excess moisture off as possible. Okay, so we have cut up all of our cod into nice bite sized pieces. Now we're going to be uh, putting it in our casserole pan. You notice I'm making room, only putting it on one side. We're not going to move it over until we are completely done with our sauce. Uh, that way it gives our, uh, us some room to mix the cod up. Um, so, now for the sauce, you're going to want to have a small pot of about three cups of milk set to low. Very important, you're not heating this milk to a boil. You're not heating it to a simmer. You don't want to get frothy. You just want it to be warm. Okay? And I'll explain why in a second. 
Now, we're going to be making a very thick sauce, and the only reason we want the milk to be warm is because we don't want it to clump when we add it to the mixture. So next, we're going to add about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Okay, we're going to want this on medium-low heat. Then to that, we're going to want to add about six tablespoons of unsalted butter and allow that to melt. I want to move it around. Now, the smart thing to do, of course, is to cut this up into little pieces so that way it melts quicker and more evenly. Uh, well, we didn't do that, so we're just going to be spinning this around for a little bit until it gets fully melted. So this looks great. As you can see, the olive oil and the butter have fully incorporated our combined. So next, what we want to add to this is six tablespoons of flour. Um, of course, add it in very slowly. Like this is what's going to go ahead and make our paste. Okay, so we're going to want to add the six tablespoons, making sure we are mixing constantly to avoid any clumping. Clumping is bad. Of course, if you have, you know, a wrist that doesn't work very well, like I do, it becomes <laughs> very difficult to mix it in slowly, but you find your ways around it. Okay, so this looks great. As you can see, we're going to fully incorporate this, make sure there's no clumps. We're going to make a nice thick paste. And we're going to let this cook for about three to five minutes. Now is a good time, while this is cooking, to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. So this looks like it's getting to about done. Now while this is cooking, you always want to make sure that you are Mixing it constantly so it doesn't burn. Now to this, we are going to add our three cups of warm milk. We're going to add this very slowly to make sure it's fully incorporated. We don't want to overpower anything. Now you're going to want it to cook for another couple minutes until it sticks to the back of the spoon. Much like this texture right here. Okay, now I just completed this. So like I said, we're going to want it to cook for a couple minutes more. Okay, so it's come to a nice, thick consistency, which is exactly what we wanted. So now to this, we're going to be adding a teaspoon of salt. Correction, tablespoon. A tablespoon of pepper. A tablespoon and a half of dill weed and the zest of one lemon. Now remember, always want to zest your lemons fresh. Want to zest your anything's fresh. There we go. Now you're going to want to save the lemon because you're going to want to serve it with the cod as a side. So now you're just going to mix all this together. I'm pretty sure you can hear my cameraman saying, mm, this smells good. And it does. I'm not paying him to say that. It actually smells really good. I am pretty sure I would be content just getting a spoonful of this and just, or know what? No. Spoons, waste of time. Straw. Straw, here. It's good. Done. Eating it. Right now. Okay, so now we're gonna make our way back to the pan. And we're going to go ahead and pour this over the cod. Oh yeah, tell me that does not do anything for you. Look at, oh my God, look at it. Look at it. Tell me, tell me you don't wanna make this. You do, I do, while I'm doing it. Okay, beautiful. 
Now we're going to want to make sure it's fully mixed in. See, having that extra side not have cod just gives us more room to move everything around so we can make sure that every piece of cod is covered in that beautiful cream sauce. Okay, so uh, we have made sure that everything is nice and even. Every piece of cod is being touched by that beautiful, beautiful sauce. So to this, we're going to top with three cups of shredded mild cheddar cheese. I personally like sharp cheddar, but cod is a very delicate flavor. You don't want to overpower it with cheese. This dish is to highlight the cod and the lovely flavors we just created in our cream sauce. So, you know, sacrifice. Sacrifice the flavor of sharp cheese. On top of the cheese, we're going to sprinkle about a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Beautiful. I like panko myself. I think it's delicious. Adds that extra little bit of crunch to it. And now we're going to go ahead and add this into the oven for about 40 minutes. While we wait for that, we're going to go ahead and make the cilantro lime rice. We want to time everything so it comes out, you know, at about the same time. Um, so everything's still warm. So we're going to go ahead and take a little break. When we come back, we're going to start with the cilantro lime rice, okay? We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. So we got about a little under 20 minutes left for our um, cod. Now we want to do this at around 30 minutes. Uh, I was scrambling a bit, but it's still going to turn out fine. If you're running behind time, turn the oven off, open the door a little bit, and just let it sit in the oven for a while, okay? So to start, we're going to go ahead and add about one tablespoon of canola oil. So you want to go ahead and heat that to about medium heat. Allow it to come to medium heat. And to that, we're going to go ahead and add about three cloves of minced garlic. Okay? And we're going to let that cook for about three to five minutes. So, as you can see, the garlic is starting to sizzle and turn a light golden brown, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to go ahead and drop the temperature to low, and we're going to add our rice and our salt. So this is about two cups of rice and one teaspoon of salt. Now we are going to want to be moving this constantly, okay? for about three minutes. We want to make sure that we don't let any of the rice burn. It is very important that you constantly keep this in motion for about three minutes, okay? So it's been about three minutes. We've been keeping this in constantly stirring, constant motion, to make sure that the rice doesn't burn. So to this, we're gonna add about two cups of chicken stock. Okay, now if you're so inclined, go ahead and use low sodium chicken stock. Next, we're going to add the zest of two limes. Now all of the, all the rice, the limes, all came from the Duchy of Whisperwind. I know I've been talking about them a lot in my videos. I just wanna highlight the importance that Duchy is bringing to the kingdom of Blackheart and what any duchy that is focused on agriculture would bring to its own kingdom in this game. I mean, you're going to need food. And who's going to produce that food? What happens, like I said, if a long winter comes? What happens if you do have a duchy fully comprised of people who are going to be feeding food? It's a pretty good candidate for uh, another warring kingdom, right? Something you have to think about. 
Um, like I said, Whisperwind, everyone there is focused on agriculture, making sure that we have our crops, making sure we have our animals that we need, our fruits, our vegetables, making sure that the uh, kingdom has a full belly at the end of the day. Next, we're going to be adding the juice of two limes. Make sure you're very careful. Don't cut your hand. This is not blood tea. We don't need anyone's blood in here. So there is the juice and the zest of two lemons. We're going to mix that and bring it to a boil. As we can see, it's come to a nice boil. So what we want to do is reduce it to low heat and allow it to simmer for about 13 to 15 minutes uh, covered. We just want to cook the rice. Now, if you notice the liquid is getting a little too low, go ahead and add more liquid, um, just enough to cover it. We want the rice to be cooked. We don't want the rice to be sticky. Okay, so we're gonna do it for about 15 minutes. Welcome back. So it's been about 15 minutes. The rice is cooked, has a nice consistency. It's a little sticky, so I might have overdone it just a little bit. We don't really don't want it to be sticky, but let's go ahead and see how it tastes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and transfer it on over here. And to that, we're going to want to go ahead and add some fresh cilantro. Now remember in my last video, I told you about the parsley. It loses its flavor in about 5-10 minutes. It's the same thing with cilantro. Add it in fresh. Lastly, we're going to add the zest. And juice of the final lemon. We're going to go ahead and try out our uh, Salrosi Cotta Gratin. We're going to see how it came out. We already took it out from the casserole. That was really good. You have the crispiness of the panko breadcrumbs on the top and that creamy sauce we made with the lemon zest and the juice of the lemon really ties this whole dish together. It makes it so it's not too creamy and too overpowering. Let's go ahead and taste it. See how it tastes with the cilantro lime rice. Now that, that is what makes the dish. The cilantro lime rice has such a powerful lime flavor to it. I definitely recommend that you pair it with a fish or a chicken or something that needs that robust flavor. Because it just explodes with the creaminess and the delicacy of the cod. It's really brought out with the, um, with the cilantro rice. It's really, really good. Um, this is by far one of the best dishes we've made so far. Um, like I said, I just want to highlight that we made this Falrosi Cod au Gratin. I want to go ahead and give uh, thanks to the city of Svalros for the cod and the Duchy of Whisperwind for the fruits and for the rice, for the vegetables. It all came out amazing. Um, once again, folks, we're doing this for Chronicles of Illyria. It is a going to be, you know, it's an MMO. It's going to be really fun, really awesome. I mean, we're able to create all of this just based off of a game that's not even out yet. So it should tell you how in-depth the developers are already getting. Um, so, once again, thank you for watching. Please feel free to subscribe. If you like what we're doing, donations are always appreciated. Um, stay tuned for our next week's episode. Next week is going to be a little bit of a surprise. I don't want to say what we're going to make because it might change again. We'll see. But thanks, everyone. You have a good night.